We are happy to have you back here at the Smite Console League, week three on the North American side. I am John Young Link Finch, and I got Anatoly here with me. Anatoly, you ready for this set? I'm really excited. We saw a nice little split earlier on, but now yep. it's Obey Alliance here against Strictly Business. Should be a firework one. Yeah, hopefully this will be a good game. I expect it will be Obey and Strictly Business, both teams that are looking like they can bring it here on the console side. In particular, where are you going to be looking for the action? I'm actually looking at the mid lane specifically. Delta Marine is just always looking for the plays happening. He's going to be against Baronic today. It's going to be an interesting matchup, especially yep. considering their god pools are relatively similar. Yeah, we do have, we want to bring up the schedule for you, just go over those a little bit, just recap everything, but you're right, that mid lane is going to be a big deal for you. Right now we got Kaz and Arrow, those are our games in the EU, as well as Rival versus Enix, we saw how those went down, just had Sora versus Imam, then Obey versus Strictly Business, that's where we're looking at now, but... We got this exciting game for you. We're talking about that mid lane in particular and how that's going to be a big focal point. And I think specifically Mifflin from Obey Alliance of how he dictates his rotations that kind of helps Delta Marine spark the momentum that he's going to get throughout the rest of the game. Mifflin is someone that's going to be a focal point for him in the in the jungle role in particular. Let's see what they decide to pick up, where they decide to try and have their focus, where they decide to have their pressure here with those picks and bands. Expecting to see, you know, Ardeo, Terra, those sort of things come out as bands. We saw some uh, Willis here earlier on today, and yeah, knowing <laughs> Mifflin, he does like to play aggressive. I wouldn't be surprised if he leans on that goddess. We already see Odin and Kronos band out. Odin can be a real big problem in the jungle in particular, kind of a flex pick, and then Kronos band out as a carry focus from Strictly mm. Business. This Odin band leads me to believe that Obey Alliance are really looking for these immobile gods that might not necessarily have escapes, and probably looking at some mage specifically that's name is not Scylla. Yeah, it could be maybe like a sustained god, like maybe a raw that they want to pick up and could have a problem with, but Ardeo is left available. Obey, snap, pick it with that first selection. And Ardeo is even a bit of a flex. We've seen Ardeo in solo and support. Sure, Ardeo has a lot of flexibility. We haven't really seen it in the jungle, although I'm sure right. there's some people that might be experimenting with it, but very staple support slash solo laner. You don't, can't really go wrong by first picking it, but Strictly Business recognizing this, they probably have done their homework. You don't just let an Ardeo go through unless you've done preparation shutting it down. So not just Ardeo for Obey, but also the Thoth. That's a lot of damage. We've seen this Thoth do very well, and in particular, I'm confident that Delta Marine can do well mm -hmm. with this pick for in the mid lane for Obey, but Hu Yi and Xing Chen picked up two gods that kind of rely on their mobility, so Ardeo Cripple could come in big. That's very true. You're really relying on getting the protections from the jump from Xing Chen, or maybe synergizing that Mark dive bomb combo from Hu Yi to find the knockup. If you're in that Cripple field, you're not going to get the benefit of either of those. However, those two gods work really well together in terms of team fight, the way or just how big and impactful their AoE ults really are. They are going to be a good matchup, especially with Ganesh. Ganesh defining an area on the battlefield where you really just don't want to be. Kind of seems like Hu Yi does the same thing. But Obey getting Thor between the Ardeo and the Thor, even with that stun from Thoth, they've got a good bit of control and initiation. The range is just really remarkable from Obey, yeah. honestly. Whether or not you take into consideration about the Anvil of Dawn from the Thor, just to set up from his wall alone is good enough for Ardeo to cut the distance, Thoth to get off the long range shots. And speaking of long range, you know, Giannis has some range in his pack. Yeah, I know that you've all experienced it where you think you're just doing your back harpies and a Giannis all through space and time comes through and, and just changes what your plans were. That's going to be locked in for Strictly Business, likely going to Baronic. Then Kernanos and Geb are going to be the picks for Obey. So then now it's seeming likely Ardeo will be the solo lane. It seems that way. Unless your name is Deathwalker, you know, you're not really <laughs> running Geb in that solo lane. Uh, Kernanos is going to be standard with the Ardeo, or I'm sorry, with the Geb rather, and should be a relatively safe lane. Kernanos has a lot of flexibility as he shifts the seasons. We don't see Mercury a whole lot. That's going to be the assassin or jungler for strictly business mercury does bring a lot of late game sure. damage once he comes online it's real hard to deal with. and i like the idea behind having ganesh and the mercury not only do you augment the damage as ganesh whenever you throw out your ball but on top of this you can throw somebody against the wall if the dharmic pillars are out there just extending the damage during that lifetime depending on when you time it as well that throw can kind of lock them down right on top of that dharmic pillar on the edges of it where it does most of its damage. We are gonna see Caden taking that Mercury into the jungle, starting off pretty normal, but something that 
Mercury can struggle with is kind of the early game, some of that pressure in the early game. It's not the same as a Thor. You're not really going to be able to pack the punch. You're really relying on your mobility and your damage items as a Mercury before you're able to really make a big impact. However, if you're caught with your pants down, a Mercury, once he hits level 5, could find an easy kill. And it's a tough pickup, I'm thinking, into Ardeo as well. Ardeo, with all that PLA, all that control, able to stick to a target, it could be difficult for Mercury to get to the back line and do the damage that he's looking to do, likely on a Delta Marine and Zaxi in particular. Now, another interesting factor is these Dharmic Pillars in conjunction with a Mercury Ultimate. Caden has to be very mindful right. about the way he lines up that can't really... Sometimes there's unfortunate circumstances where you line it up and then you hit an on her pillar or a Thor wall or stuff like that, and that could come back to haunt him. One other thing to keep a, a lookout for with Strictly Business in the early game is everyone just kind of moving around, getting their farm, is Baronic with that through space and time. They're going to have a lot of mobility on the side of Strictly Business. It's important to try and match the global pressure that Mifflin's going to be able to put out with the Thor. So Baronic and how well he can help move his team around is going to be another key focal point against Mifflin, who's going to be all over the map. Multi-assets all across the board for Strictly Business. Not only do the portals help augment the movement speed, but you're also looking at the threshold, that little line ability that slows enemies, boosts up your allies, and giving a little extra damage to Delta Marine's kit. Strictly Business are able to take the, um, the fire elementals on the solo side, so that's a little more farm going to Cade and Baronic that they're happy to soak up as Ryan Jarman and Jaworz continue to fight it out. Now, with Arnie over here in the soul lane, how's that matchup going to go with her against the Xing Chen? The Xing Chen is not going to be able to be the big bully that he wants to, simply because Dwarves will be able to outheal Jarman, at least in the earlier phase, in the earlier laning phase. But once Ryan Jarman gets some items online, he gets uh, some MP5 rolling or a higher mana pool, then he's going to spam those abilities, get the HP5 from his passive, and match sustain with sustain. However, the sheer burst damage from both of these Guardians will be felt. And I'm glad you brought up not just the damage, but their itemization. Because their lane opponents are going to be magical damage, but the junglers are going to be physical. Normally, solo laners have the luxury of being able to be physical against their opponent and the jungle, but now they're going to have to pick. Do you think they're going to prioritize magic for their opponent or physical for the jungle? I think they might prioritize an early hide of the urchin if they really want to get the hybrid item effect. And despite being magical guardians here in the solo lane, going for a vampiric shroud, simply because they know that if they accidentally hit the enemy god, you're going to get all that mini aggro, and that's where the physical protection is more beneficial. And we're seeing Mad Koi's hanging out here in the mid lane, rotating over to try and help get some of this neutral farm. There's really not any buffs up for him right now. PB and Jelly just helping Zaxi farm out, but I think some of the splitting that PB and Jelly and Zaxi have been doing to put him a little bit behind Fatal Ghost. Relatively new hunter for this team, not to the console scene. Zaxi's transition to Obey Alliance so far, so good. Nothing too out of the ordinary. He's just doing his job as a hunter. He makes the plays happen once he gets to that mid to late stage. And we've been seeing with the console league lately that the hunters in the early game, they're not super important. They don't have to rotate over all the time. They're, they, they're less and less becoming the focus of the map as these elementals and those harpies are really the one where we're seeing a lot of contest or contestation. So once Zaxi and Fatal Ghost are online, they're able to start rotating into those team fights later on in the mid game or even close to the late game. That's when they'll start really shining. And both of them will control a lot of space between their ultimates. The Suns, the Wild Hunt, both of those hunters are really going to have to find that right timing window to change the tide of a team fight. In the earlier stages, it's all just basically who can out farm the other. And just from farming and controlling the camp, Strictly Business have established, you know, closer to like maybe a two or three hundred gold lead. So that's just a couple camps going their way that Obey Alliance haven't been able to get. Only Fatal Ghost here. He wow. commits the ultimate to risky. try and stop them from getting the Oracles. He does at least split. Wow, risky business there from Strictly Business trying to go for the Oracles, just committing that ultimate. Not only can that be used offensively, but that's your get out of jail free card. If your dive bomb is not up, you have to throw the suns on yourself just to slow your enemies. And that could be a 90 second window for Obey Alliance to look for a first blood. And we see Mad Quiz rotate over here likely because of that, just to try and help make sure Fatal Ghost doesn't come under too much pressure. There also wasn't any minion wave in mid, so there was no farm for him to get there. So rotating around, 
trying to get the most out of out of that watcher's gift and, and uh, get as much farm as he can. A lot of sharing between the dual lane of Zaxi and PB and Jelly yeah. just now hitting level 7, whereas Fail Ghost has been level 8 for quite a bit of time. Not only that, those oracles that did end up splitting, only one of them went to Fail Ghost experience-wise, whereas it was divided by three members for Zaxi. And that is going to be a bit relevant here, that Fatal Ghost has been able to, to establish a, a decent experience lead over in the duo lane. It's something that could end up helping him pressure out Zaxi, but the pressure is really happening in solo lane. to worse than their pressure from Ryan Jarman. The, the dash does actually hit from Mercury, throwing him back into Ryan Jarman. The ultimate's still available. They've gotten this Oof. pressure without it. They didn't hit anything, but Matt Coy has dropped the ultimate. Cataclysm comes out, but open the air is Thor looking to crash down. He does. He gets the stun off to save his PB and Jelly for just a moment, but he does end up falling. To Kate. There's just not enough return fire. Kaden, though, needs to be careful. Interrupts the Berserker Barrage, charging the Thoth Ultimate. Kaden going to survive now. Delta Marine slightly off the mark. Mifflin counting his lucky stars as he's able to get away with that one and strictly misses with an early two kills. We said Kaden might not be doing much damage early, but did you see the way he was chunking away at Mifflin? Those two kills both going on to the Mercury is going to be a big problem for Obey Alliance because now he's established himself a lead and already building into some crit is Caden. That could have come up in that fight. That's right. The net worth here for this Mercury is already skyrocketing. Tied with Matt Coyce playing the Ganesh. And the beautiful thing about Ganesh is even if your support lasted, the way the passive works is it's an assist for the Ganesh. It's actually going to be credited to somebody else. So whether or not the last hit was for Caden, it favors strictly business because now you're getting your late game hyper carry online quicker. And Matt Coy's was a big part of that fight with those Dharmic pillars, just nowhere for Obey Alliance to go in that last engagement. So to worst, and PB and Jelly falling a little bit behind. PB and Jelly was already a little bit behind Mad Coy's as a result of them splitting that farm and dual lane. So things get just a little bit worse there as now that gold lead's about 1,800 in favor of Strictly Business. Delta Marines about half health here as he begins these left side mid harpies. Not able to make any rotations as buffs are on the right side. So he should be safe for the moment, but he's actually following his jungler. However, Mifflin walking over the ward. Fatal Ghost is fully aware of this. Fatal Ghost getting smacked by that hammer a little bit, but it's the Oracles that are the focus by Obey Alliance. They end up getting both of them, so now they got some vision over here, but Through Space and Time comes out, as well as the ultimate from Caden. He's able to trap down PB and Jelly, who puts out the shield, but gets deleted by Baronic with that unstable Vortex. Mifflin yet again not able to find the return kill, and Jelly's going to be the unfortunate victim this time around yet again. And look at Baronic. He went with the Doom Orb, likely because of the safety that's afforded to a Yanis, and that's why he was able to blow up PB and Jelly despite him putting the shield on himself in that last engagement. Now, not only is Yanis just relatively safe because of his kit, but it's just the combination of that and how aggressive the rest of Strictly Business is between Mad Coys on the Ganesh and Caden on the Mercury. He's already got it at 43 stacks, so... Veronica going to continue to hit through that fight, and I love the strong shot calling that came out from Strictly Business. We saw Caden and Veronica both use their ultimates to help lock down PB and Jelly, so that, that semi-global presence we were talking about from for both these teams so far has been in favor of Strictly Business. And honestly, despite it being a Geb, it's probably the best target in the early stages to focus Jelly before those defensive items come online, because if you focus anyone besides Jelly, he's just going to throw a Geb shield on them anyway, negating the CC that you would eventually do on him with that Mercury ultimate. Unable to get that cleanse off on himself because he'd be CC during mm -hmm. it, so no way for him to really act. Delta Marine, Mifflin, and PB and Jelly, though, are hanging around this mid lane trying to see if there's anything else they can get. The ball is in Strictly Business's court now, though, as they're the ones that have a little bit of a lead in this early game that again, we see usually come out in the way of vision or maybe being a little bit ahead in items. So they'll get to decide where we see our next engagement. Because of this lead that Strictly Business is getting, Zaxi's going for a more early game lead or oh, build Invile, rather. Wow. Yeah, it's not something that we normally see ever since the Devil Gloves change giving in more additional power before the stacks and after the fact. So wanting to try to maybe look for some early boxing potential and bring some sort of presence to at least one lane for Obey Alliance. I think he's going to have to to make it for the fact that Fatal Ghost is already stacking those Devil Gloves. Zax is going to need to make something serious happen in the duo lane to make up for that change he's had to make in his build or at least that adjustment. 
but strictly business, are able to get that last spawn of those fire elementals because now the fire giant's tearing into the map. But PB and Jelly could be sandwiched here. Jarman doesn't seem to recognize Ooh, he's there. He wanted to find the roll around, but he's actually just going to go back into the safety between that tier one and tier two tower. Jarman doing a little bit of poke. Onto Baronic, nothing to write home about as he goes back to farming on the right. But going back to the build for Zaxi versus Fatal Ghost, another idea there by not going for the lifesteal is just remembering that he has the spring season that That's he can right. go to for the lifesteal anyway. So he'll still be able to help like threaten perhaps like the Gold Fury or something the Devil Gloves does afford some of these some of these 80 carries when there's action elsewhere on the map. And there's a grouping from Obey Alliance for these Oracles. They're trying to make this the thing that they have control of on the map since after Jarman and Caden have been doing so well, they're having a hard time on the solo side. The most efficient way to split is usually two or three people, four or more, and then it just becomes completely inefficient for at least gold or experience. However, the vision that's provided after securing those two Oracle Harpies is very valuable. It lasts for exactly a minute and heading into the 11 minute mark, this could be a point where either team can melt the Gold Fury by having that vision now obey alliance can safely go back to base knowing that Strictly Business can't sneak it away. And look at Caden, Ryan, Jarman here trying to come down for the spawn of the speed buff. They were there right when it spawned, but not able to do it because Mifflin went up into the air. So they got the ultimate from Mifflin just to defend his buff. Look the at silence. the damage from Matt Coy. The silence was the so good because now he had to use the bees just to hammer away. Caden thinking about going back in. Takes the portal for now into safety, but the Dharmic Pillars really trying to lock down Jelly. Once again, it's poor PB and Jelly who's the one that's getting locked down. Not the kind of sandwich that I want to have right now as Caden gets his third kill of the game, going up to 3-0-1 with that wind demon already completed. It's such a scary start here if you're looking at Obey Alliance because this level 12 Mercury is just going to be absolutely relentless. Now has the luxury of going back for that second relic slot. Wouldn't be surprised to see an early sprint trying to augment more movement speed. And Mifflin really couldn't be a part of that fight. Just to try and protect his speed buff, he had to go up into his ultimate when they recognized the rotation from Jarman and Caden and... Matt Coys came over and forced out his beads. There was really no way for him to be a part of that. And that's what Strictly Business were able to lock down PB and Jelly. And now Caden has a few more moments where he's the one with all the pressure on the map. Putting all their eggs in one basket, Obey Alliance, whenever they group up for Oracles or for Speed Buff, Strictly Business can just look for little holes to poke him out. And Obey Alliance a little too quick on the trigger finger, not able to really just get any plays happening. And Strictly Business with these four kills, not the biggest lead in the right. world, but it's just something to play with. And we talked a little bit earlier about the builds that our solo laners are going to be going for. Take a look at Ryan Jarman. He did choose to go with that Pestilence, so he's got some defense against his lane opponent, and that's something he can do now that Caden is the one that has the pressure, and Mifflin's really not having too big an impact. Despite it giving the magical defense, it's also, I believe, the anti-healing. Oh, the play, nice stun from Mifflin, just going to completely stop Caden in his tracks. And had the shield from PB and Jelly there, so I'm not sure if that ultimate even connected or if the, or if the C he was just cleansed right away, but Mifflin available to immediately drop the hammer and prevent any more aggression from Caden. So that's one cooldown they won't have. And then going back on that discussion there, Pestilence is also that anti-lifesteal or anti-region that you're really looking for. The double, triple bounce, not really on the mark to steal away the red, but Jelly not wanting to give this up. Will force the beads out of Ghost. And yet again, still more pressure. Strictly business, despite forcing out the beads, want to continue. The hammer from Mifflin did put good damage on the Fatal Ghost, who immediately drops the ultimate on Mifflin, who was locked down by Caden. The damage combination from those two was devastating for Mifflin. Just such clean synergy from Strictly Business. There's no response that Obey Alliance. They just don't have an opening to find any sort of kills. Doors in the mid lane trying to poke out a little bit against SB, but it's just not enough here. This level 13. Ardio is more about the cooldowns. Once again, Caden coming over and forcing out a pair of relics. He does take the beads from Zaxi, who's now have those on cooldown. Didn't have to use the Aegis, so that is still available for him, but you were talking about how Pestilence is good in particular particular against the Ardeo because there's so much heal in her kit. That's true. She does have two different options from that healing. Both of them are in that third stance. I'm sorry, third stance in the Druid and then first ability in the Druid as well. And those two options keep her topped off a little bit more. And Ardeo's all about spamming her abilities to get the MP5 enough to keep constantly healing her up. So this Pestilence is just to limit some of those options.
and we saw Ryan Jarman use the ultimate against Dwarves there. That's something that we've been able to notice just on the map there, is Jarman, every chance he gets, is trying to come down and contest this blue buff, but Caden is around to try and help out, but Ardeo, or Dwarves rather, did choose to go to Breastplate of Valor, so he's got some defense to help against that physical jungle. It's mostly about the ability to spam everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all about the abilities out of Dwarves, and that's not a bad idea, honestly, going Breastplate of Valor. You get an exorbitant amount of mana, 20% cooldown reduction, you can't neglect the MP5 that comes with it. Look at this build Baronic has going here. The Doom Orb pin boots into the Obsidian Shard. He's certainly going to be swinging if these, and when this aggression's happening. We saw a little bit of it earlier, and if he hits a long range through space and time, I actually hold that. Mifflin is up into the air, perhaps looking for Baronic, who we just spoke of. He does land down, Too but fast. not able to get the stun. Matt Coys, though, was right around the corner to help. The Mercury ultimate is good as well from Caden, but he's not going to commit. Instead, going to dash away a triple ulti from Jelly, forcing out the beans out of Caden. Disengaged from Baronic, but the ultimate from Delta Marine, still very patient as the setup was there, but... A lot of bees being used. That portal couldn't have come a half second later. Dewurst was right there to try and put out that cripple field. We saw him ready to try and slow down the escape from Giannis. I don't believe he can pass through those portals if he's currently uh, crippled. It's very difficult for Mifflin right now to find Delta Marine, or I'm sorry, to find Boronic because of just the mobility that he has. As long as he goes through his own portal, he takes over the threshold, the movement speed, increases pretty dramatically and that's not the easiest ability to hit in the world. That's right, Mifflin not even able to land on Baronic and force out beads or relics. He was able to just sort of back up and, and move on with his life. That's how Yanis is. He's kind of got to get out of jail free card with those portals. So now Strictly Business moving over to the Gold Fury pit. The Gold Fury already down below half health, but Obey Alliance's strong rotation forces them to back off. They also forced out a couple of these escapes and gap closers, and that's why Matt Coys is trying to get a little bit closer for the poke while the rest of his team securing those oracles, while Fatal Ghost now feeling very confident with his level 16 Hoi, fully stacked Devil Gloves. As long as Kanan's around the corner, those two is the only DPS required. And Ryan Jarman is here. He's out rotated to worst because he was proxy farming. Mifflin, though, up into the air with the Thor ultimate, and Ryan Jarman is spinning to win. Thor does land only on the Matt Coys. The knockup forces the beads out of Mifflin right away, and the ultimate from from Kaden was immediate in response. Now the egg of the egg is on cooldown, but the stun from Delta Marine was big to slow down the DPS. Zaxi gets a kill as does Baronic on the Delta Marine so far. Two for one in favor of Strictly Business. Jelly did a great job controlling the battlefield. Making the rotation now is Dwarves Baronic trying to find the last hit. He does connect a three for one at the end of the day at Strictly Business. They started the goal here. They didn't get it yet, but they're winning this team fight pretty well. And they've gotten some of the most priority targets, Mifflin and, P uh, and Delta Marine in particular. Not going to be a part of this engagement as they go back to try and start up the Gold Fury. Dwarves is still around, but Zaxi only just getting back, or just had to go back. So now Circuit the Bitch should be able to pretty easily take this objective. Relatively healthy is Dwarves, but he's going to disengage. As Matt Coyce is still holding on to the goal. Fury. Dwarves in a little bit of trouble, trying to heal for whatever he can, but he's going to fall. At the end of the day, it was a four for one, but that death bought enough time for SB to get off the goal. Fury. Now Zaxi to make this rotation. If there was vision from Obey Alliance to spot out these backs, I can guarantee you Zaxi would try to solo this goal. Fury. Good job by Dewar sticking around long enough to get Strictly Business to back off. They do end up giving four kills, though, up overall. So that's nine to one now. Strictly Business are ahead in the kill count at about 3,000 gold in the gold count. And those kills went on some of the worst targets. Baronic already having a really good time against Delta Marine up three levels is now going to be sitting even prettier at 4-0-3 oh, and, and Caden at 3-1-4. and four. And a lot of the discrepancies between these two mid laners levels is due to the fact that junglers are just on different levels. It's also the idea of out comping your opponent here. You're looking at Matt Coy's playing Ganesha that can easily interrupt Mifflin during the Berserker Barrage and then interrupt the teleport of the hammer. That's such a big problem here for, for Mifflin, but it's also been that Baronic is just too mobile. Even when he goes up into the air and it's just Baronic in mid lane, he's not even able to land on him. So it's just been a little bit rough for Mifflin at the start of this game and Caden getting an early kill, helping him out over there in that solo lane side. I think we do hear though that they're trying to make something happen on this on this well, they thought side. they were on Gold Fury, but instead he's going to get a double stun in mid. Baron going to beads away, escape on the right-hand side, while Portal Demon was actually secured by SB. 
That's another win for, for Strictly Business, being able to secure the portal. Demon Mifflin used the ultimate to try and make something happen here on this left side jungle, but wasn't able to. They are at least able to establish position here for these oracles, but Caden is here. He's going to try and shut it down. The hammer not connecting on the return, so it did about a third of its true potential damage. Mifflin going to eat a chunk of his own health there as Caden found the major look, and this is going to be these two teams jockeying for positioning around the goal. Fury 20 minute mark. We're seeing these hunters at level 17 gonna easily melt it in like less than 10 seconds. Especially with Fatal Ghost going that attack speed build so far. Remember, he is the one that was able to get the Devil Gloss. He's got those stacks going. Zaxi is sitting on Kin's kin size though, so he's certainly gonna be able to do damage to some of these tankier characters like like Ryan Jarman rather or, or, or Matt Coys. But the Gold Fury already very low. The lockdown from Matt Coys was enough to slow down PB and oh, Jelly. The, the ultimate, ultimate comes out from Caden. Trying to go in the back line. Jelly is taking a lot of damage, but Caden is forced to Aegis away. Mifflin is trying to hunt him down, but it's gonna be actually two dead members for Obey. Two quick kills for Strictly Business can very well spell the Gold Fury for them. They make the call to come back and go ahead and get it started up, but Dwarst and Mifflin are both still here. Ultimate not really available for Mifflin, and Dwarst Ultimate is only a stance change, so they won't have too big of a contest here, but Dwarst is coming around the back. Mifflin gets the wall out, but not able to stun oh. anyone. Now they're looking to slow him down, and won't have the hammer available to try and escape the Aegis, and the beads weren't enough, and Mifflin recognized he was dead to rights. Mifflin, unfortunately, just staggered the teleport a little bit too late. He saw that the double tap happened, and then that's when his eyes lit up. He tried to take the teleport. It was too late. He tried to prime that Berserker Barrage, but at that point, the rest of SB was hot on his trail. Ryan Jarman keeping Zaxi from being a part of the engagement. The Ohm from Matt Coys to slow down Doors from coming in to be a part of it. Zaxi does clean up Ryan Jarman, but I'm sure he's happy to make the trade. They take the Gold Fury. Very easy zone from Matt Coys. So seeing Doors just charging at them, it's just like, oh, man, there's no possible way to get in range to do anything and uh, with that free gold fury from SB they're building about a 5,000 gold lead. Matt Coy's only wants peaceful bears around him so using that ohm to slow things down a little bit but we saw just on the right side just a glimpse of it Baronic had that portal available if Kane didn't needed that escape path it would have been there for him so that's one more thing that Yanis brings so much he's doing a great job of putting out damage here with the build he's got so far but also the utility is just so important that's such an important job as a mid mage trying to sit in the back line and not only do your damage but be that utility style mid mage to help your teammates escape if they get into danger because honestly between the blink actually and the beats Piranha could be the one being aggressive and look for that engage shotgun double tap strictly business despite being up 12 to 2 in the kills are up about four to five thousand gold which is not a lead that obey alliance couldn't fight into or anything like that Sure, they could still fight into this lead. It's not getting too out of control for Obey Alliance quite yet, especially how much control they have with the Geb, with Thor. But the problem here for Obey Alliance is the, the routes. The routes that Caden is taking with these Mercury Ultimates, the Obey are just not expecting it or they're just not prepared for it whatsoever. And it's all SB that are getting the better end of it just off that one ability. And let's take a look at our supports here. 05 and 1 for PB and Jelly. He's the one in particular that's getting caught out a lot. It's been real rough for him, but Matt Coys has been involved in every single kill so far. He's all over the map. That Ganesh Passive in particular does help with that, but he's been setting up a lot of what's been going down. If you look at all these deaths from Obey, it's simply because there's no shell, there's no sprint. Sure, you blink on Geb is nice for initiation, but sometimes you can't necessarily always be on the offensive. Well, they really don't have a team fighting relic at it's all, true, it looks yeah. like. Wow. Wow. They're going for two thorns, one on Dwarfs, one on Jelly, which will immune, it basically stops Fatal Ghost for attacking for eight seconds once that's upgraded. But then after that, what good is it? It'll, really, it'll just force them to sort of to switch targets if it's not in the front line. So at this point, that is a big part of why Strictly Business are doing so well with the Sprint and the Shell both sitting on top of Matt Coys. And don't forget, Jarman has that Hand of the Gods. So if it comes down to a 50-50 around these objectives, he'll have the Secure for that as well. Well, I'm not a betting man, but I definitely would take a final judgment over Hand of the God for <laughs> uh, Objective Secure.
That's right, Final Judgment is very good at clearing it out, but if Caden is giving Delta Wing problems in the back line, it may not come to it. But look at this positioning from Shakily Business. They knew the Portal Demon was coming up, and they're here for it. PB and Jelly and DeWurst are local, and Mifflin is also here, but he doesn't have his ult, so he won't be able to go up into the air. It's all about Zaxi that was just clearing out that left side, now making the rotation. This is why SB is here. Jelly going to blink and find the double cataclysm, but he's going to get pulled back into his team. Obey Alliance are able to steal away the Portal Demon, but now it's going to be all about the team fight. Strictly Business able to disengage cleanly, but they do lose the objective thanks to PB and Jelly strong engage. Jelly making a clutch play there, even without his Hunter being in position. A little bit risky considering it would have went south, but Mifflin just gets deleted. The bounce from Fatal Ghost was just too good. The Aegis comes out to Delta Marine to help him just walk out of the damage from Fatal Ghost, and the through space and time from Veronica is off the mark. No one able to use those portals to get to position. Lots of big cooldowns used without much coming from it. That's the 50 stack duel more with Rada Tahuti from Baronic. Normally a lot of players complain, man, like Giannis just doesn't do enough damage. You tell Baronic that Gian Giannis doesn't do that much damage. It's just all about whether or not you land those abilities. Baronic choosing his target well. He and Fatal Ghost were able to lock down Mifflin there in that middle lane and delete him from the map. A Streak of the Business able to take something back after losing that Portal Demon, which is a good method from Obey Alliance to sort of stall out the push that Strictly Business have been doing so far. Good disengage from Matt Coyce, really respecting the potential follow-up after the knockup from Jelly. Level 20 on Saxy with Chinsai's Executioner, Aussie, Ikavile. That's a lot of attack speed and penetration that could just melt that support. Caden was looking around the back of the fight and actually gets the ultimate out from Mifflin once again, which is curious as the Gold Fury is only 20 seconds from respawning. So Strictly Business will be aware that one of the big initiation factors for Obey won't be available. Well, the ultimate of Mifflin, that's such a big tool. It's uh, going to be a shorter cooldown slightly because of that 20% cooldown reduction from the Yoden's Wrath. But at the end of the day, you can't be using your ultimate willy-nilly, especially when you're by yourself. The rest of his teammates weren't necessarily nearby even to follow up. That was unlikely to be a kill onto Caden who had his relics or really they were on cooldown so if he recognized that that could be a big part of why he maybe made that engagement but look at Strictly Business now they're trying to bait Obey Alliance into this fight. It's Matt Coy's Baronic and Ryan Jarman who are here with Caden waiting in the wing wings. All ten members are right around this Gold Fury pit as Strictly Business try and bait in Obey. But look at Caden all the way in the back trying to line up that ultimate from a distance. Jelly needs to be very wary about how he engages, not wanting to try to get Mercury ultimate or get CC'd before the action begins. He's going to want to blink in first. Fatal Ghost now is pulling it. It's actually very low, and despite Obey Alliance being right here, they weren't able to do anything to try and contest it. Veronic gets credit for cleaning it up, but Mifflin's ult is back up, and Matt Coys gets deleted. Caden comes from the team fight and forces out the bead from Zaxi in the back line. Third space in time, just barely misses. Shelly very low, having to disengage underneath. It's Dwar zoning out, too, in the back line fail ghost is very low the cripple field keeping him at bay but the, it's the portal that gets him away from that final judgment the ultimate from delta marine only just barely off the mark baronic able to go through and clean up zaxi now this team fight is turned entirely on its head caden looking for more as fatal ghost gets pushed oh out but God. once again baronic in the back with the damage through space and time does plenty of damage delta marine also sent back to base an unofficial triple kill for baronic yet again showing us how much damage potential a yacht with some items can truly do and just like that second goal fury goes to SB yet again and they have a little bit of momentum to get this tier one tower and build even more of a lead. It feels like they just lost track of Baronic in that prolonged engagement and who can blame him? The dude can walk through walls. He ends up in the back side of the team fight able to catch two people with his unstable vortexes and just clean up the team fight. That's that's Obsidian Shard Rod Dehudi doing it for you, man. Despite Obey Alliance striking first blood in that team fight, yeah. it was such a great turnaround by Caden recognizing it, baiting his teammate to fall, using that ultimate just to cut the distance, but it's going to be in a lot of troubles. Caden has to disengage. Good safety from Ryan, but yet again, Caden does the damage, and the way he disengaged after the ultimate, he uses Aegis Amulet, instantly taking the Giannis portal, recognizing that once I'm done Mercury ulting, all eyes on me.
and it was just a couple of key cooldowns for a Bay, Bay Alliance that were a little bit off the mark. If that final judgment from Delta Marine mm -hmm. finds its home onto Baronic, who escapes through the portal, then that hold into the team fight can shake out differently. But instead, Baronic's able to escape and re-engage, I believe, twice after that to clean up two kills. He's a slippery little Giannis sitting at 7-0-7. Still can sell his starter item just for even more damage. And surprising to see the order of those penetration items for Baronic. Normally, you do the Spear of Desolation before the Obsidian Shard, right. but because he had all that magical power from the Doom Orb, he felt very confident that he needed the percent penetration to get some of these objectives down quicker. And if, if he's not mobile enough, he's even picked up the Blink as one of his relics, so that's probably a good point why we see him able to get to the back line of these fights so consistently, and why they're losing track of him. It's just too difficult for Obey Alliance that are struggling so hard here, heading into the 30-minute mark. All of SB positioned around this Fire Giant Portal Demon. Dwarf's going to actually aggro the Fire Giant there. I thought he was going to try to put himself in a position for the knockups. Damage once again from Veronica on the backside, but it's Mifflin who caught him out and brought him down low. He uses he chooses to use that Anvil of Dawn and go back up into the air, trying to choose between Baronic and landing back in the team fight. Still waiting around for some setup from the rest of his team, and he finds it landing, but it's PB and Jelly who ends up falling to Fatal Ghost. Mifflin missing the mark onto Fatal Ghost. Caden lining up that Mercury Ultimate. Good wall from Mifflin there. Was looking for that Mercury Ultimate. Not today. Through space and time, though. Almost connecting onto Dwarst. That through space and time so scary in these team fights. If you're caught napping, you could get caught being sent back to base. Matt Coy's taking a good bit of poke, but it's strictly business with position. Once again, trying to lower down that portal demon. DeWurst has to go try and be the front line to slow this down. But again, we've Kaden. seen the lockdown potential. Caden gets One caught shot. out. Mifflin taken down by the Mercury once again. You cannot back in a lane against the Mercury. And Zaxi taking out Matt Coy. So at least it's a one for one. Jelly's going to revive soon, but Zaxi Zaxi, nowhere to go. Final judgment is going to force out the Aegis out of Fatal goes Dwarfs trying to avenge his fallen hunter, doing what he can, but the rest of SB is not allowing it. That was a big time Aegis from Fatal Ghost to make sure that final judgment didn't delete him from the map. Now Dwarfs in a bad position, able to use that charge to try and escape, and the shield from PB and Jelly is enough, but strictly business do get the portal demon. They pick up two quick kills on the Mifflin and Zaxi, only giving up their support and trade. Very clean performance so far from Fatal Strictly Ghost Business. The fire team. He's so risky. He knows that Caden was going to come back from taking the portal, and it's more Caden doing the damage than Fatal Ghost. Fatal Ghost is the tank in that position. <laughs> Caden came in and started shredding the fire giant, and you saw it to worst. I'm, I'm sorry, Ryan Jarman recognized that that's what the call was, so he wasn't just hanging around in that front line for fun. He was keeping Obey Alliance from being able to be a part of that. Fire giant. You're saying that's not for fun, but honestly, if I'm Ryan Jarman there and I'm zoning two or three more members, that's pretty fun for me. It's like, I'm a guardian. You're just tickling me, dude. Now, they aren't able to get that Fire Giant onto Matt Coy, so he will be missing out on some of the sustain that that buff provides, but, there's, but the damage and the extra damage on the structures is on all the key members. Caden going to be able to take down this Gold Fury, and now our lead crits. for Strictly Business is at Just 9, look 000. at those crits. He actually got a four-digit crit on the Gold Fury. Not a very common thing in Smite these days. Not only to see Mercury, but such a high damage crit. Even out of Hunters, you don't really see this kind of itemization here. Going for the Blood Forge really wanted to try to get the 1v1 boxing potential, maybe even against Zaxi, and trying to go more defensive for the Kernos, going for Frostbound Hammer. And I like the build he's going to, relying on his stem for the attack speed and instead focusing mostly on crit and then that life steal that we're seeing come out for him too. So he's going to be hitting real hard in these late game engagements. We even saw Baronic though, if we're talking about builds, pick up the Kronos Pendant to make sure that he's getting off more abilities in these fights too. It's not a bad idea whatsoever. He already has the 10% from the Spear of Desolation and he traded the 10% from the Star Iron just to get that Kronos Pendant. And with this Fire Giant buff, with the red buff sitting at 885 magical power. Disgusting. I don't even want to think about what happens if you get hit by an instable vortex or through space and time and max distance. It'll definitely delete Zaxi or Delta Marine, so they got to be on the lookout for it. Even Mifflin, who's not particularly tanky at this point, just starting up, trying to build some little tanky. Some slap boxy from Mifflin oh, on the right hand side. But the through space and time or the portal was available, but no one followed through. But they do get tier two in left. I thought that they were all like at first. I thought that was a through space and time portal, so the rest of SB was going to go through it, and that the pull would have happened towards the portal and then they all just would have died. 
Yeah, and Mifflin was kind of just standing around taking the slap box, believing he wasn't in, under any danger. So if that had been the plan, it would have definitely been a surprise for him. Tier 2 at mid also falls in Strictly Business. Look to take the Tier 2, and the call from Obey Alliance is just to defend on the Phoenix, because they know they can't fight into Fire Giant on those towers. There's no structure damage whatsoever on your left-hand side from Obey Alliance. Wow. They're all healthy. The damage that was dealt onto the solo lane was actually all from minions. It's actually zero, not just like kind of zero, just actually it's zero. It's just pure zero all across the board, and that's what's reading across the momentum here from Obey Alliance. They just don't have any. It's just SB trying to siege their first Phoenix on the right. Doris trying to be the front line, but he's under too much pressure. PB and Jelly is the one, though, that gets thrown back into the team, gets a good cataclysm, and falling on top of it is Mifflin that sets up Zaxi to get Matt Coys, as also PB and Jelly falls. Fatal Ghost going to have to back up, and the Phoenix on the right-hand side does still stand. Good disengage from Fatal Ghost. Barely able to get out of that one. Still not able to pull the trigger was Caden there. He was hesitating on his ultimate slightly. And I think the main reasoning there was if he went in, there's no escape at that point because McCoy's died before using either of his defensive team relics. So a strong defense from Obey Alliance does force Strictly Business to back off for the moment. But since it was a one-for-one -one trade with supports, it looks like they're looking to still try and push in on the so on the solo lane side, and Caden is split pushing here in mid. Anyone that's going to go against Caden has the potential to get two to three shot yes. whatsoever. And Mifflin is the good target to leave against Caden simply because he can stun him from a distance, not allowing Caden to cut that gap. As long as you can time it against the Mercury Ultimate or the dash, you should be in good spot with Mifflin despite being behind. Strictly business just testing to see the testing the defense of Obey Alliance there. When they recognize that Obey Alliance are going to defend patiently, they back off. The Fire Giant was about to fall off anyway. Now they're 50 seconds from that respawning and Portal De Demon coming up just in time to give them a shortcut right back to the Fire Giant pit where they'll be able to set up to take it down one more time. It's better safe than sorry uh, for Strictly Business. They didn't want to try to lose too many more members, especially with this objective coming back. And as FDOT loves to say, is uh, the test of the fortitude of the enemy team by throwing a brick through their window and seeing the response time of the police there. And clearly, Is that something Ifdot likes to say? That's <laughs> definitely what he loves it to say. It sounds like it. What does that mean, Tom? You're going to you're gonna have to tell me later. <laughs> but uh, right now, Strictly Business are the ones with the positioning around the Fire Giant. Ten seconds from that coming up, and they're just putting down their wards, pushing up the lanes, and establishing vision control. Going for the next Fire Giant that's respawning right about now. The rest of Obey Alliance just not positioned even close to this objective, the vision control dictated by SB. Yeah, Obey Alliance recognized they can't contest this Fire Giant. They're just going to have to wait and fight on the Phoenix. It went well for him last time. This time, though, Fire Giant is on all five members, so at least Matt Coys has a mini victory that he gets to be a part of the Fire Giant this time. Going to just clear up a little bit more off the map are Strictly Business, and they want the Phoenix the furthest away from the Fire Giant. Mifflin just holding down the hammer, man. He's holding down the fort. He's not. A, he's like just saying, you shall not pass right here. I'm going to ulti you from a distance, wall you off. And honestly, this is the best spot to ulti from from mid because you're going to have range from all three sides in case there is a 1-3-1 one, one tactic from SB. It looks like, again, they're going to go with that 2-3 status here. Mifflin, or Caden going in, trying to catch the out. Bait. Mifflin, the wall was good enough, though, to keep him alive. And Caden and Barani take a whole bunch of damage. But the Phoenix in left is actually very, very low. So the split push works. They're able to take the left side Phoenix, but now can they make the escape? Jelly in the back trying to do what he can. Fail goes is very low, trying to disengage. Gets the shell through space and time, saving his hunter. Baronic being so good offensively and defensively. No one from Obey can catch the Giannis. What a call coming out from Baronic and what trust coming out from Fatal Ghost in his mid laner. That, that Aegis timer was just about to run out, but he runs back towards the enemy team to take the portal and he escapes. Mifflin commits his ultimate as well, looking to clean him up, but he was escaping through the through space and time, and now they're all regening with that fire giant buff and looking to take out the mid phoenix as well it's not looking too good here for obey alliance as there's going to be some fire minions eventually trickling down the left hand side baroni going to push out the wave a little further before regrouping with the rest of his teammates in mid sb thinking about a way to get in there the teleport of the hammer not being used very smart Anvil of Dawn and Cataclysm are on cooldown for Obey Alliance. They won't have the ultimate from Geb, Mifflin, or the Wild Hunt from Zaxi. Instead, there are three ultimates up for, for Strictly Business with Caden, Ryan Jarman, and Matt Coys, even Moronic, some of the most important ones, all available. Strictly Business have their minion wave, and Caden is 
bringing Mifflin over to the right side to try and help make the push. It's all about the cooldown reduction, and SB have it at full force. Jelly gonna get knocked up after the pull. Taking a little bit of return damage was Ryan, but he's not too worried here. Geb Shield not available now for another 10 seconds or so. The Unstable Vortex, though, does take half of Zaxi's health, so he has to back up. The Dharmic Pillars come out from Matt Coy's to keep Zax away from the engagement. Veronica ends up blowing up Delta Marine. The, the, the fight onto the Phoenix is still going on. Veronica comes to the side, unable to find anything, but it's Gaten who ends up getting Mifflin. The blink from Veronica gets him to the back, where once again he can help put damage into PB and Jelly. Caden is running through the team fight. He's trying to find the right angle there. He's not going to commit onto Zaxi quite yet. There's two more members alive. Dwarse actually takes out Fatal Ghost there, but. Still trying to do what he can, trying to be that stall tactic for Obey Alliance, actually leading them outside of the Phoenixes there, but he's going to get locked into place. Fourth dead member for Obey Alliance, and it's only up to Zaxi to defend against four. Zaxi up against four members with a Fire Giant buff and three fire or three minion waves, two of which are fire. The Titan just doesn't stand a chance. It's getting smacked into by Caden, who's critting for a million right now. The kill and the game goes the way of Strictly Business. 40 minutes of action. Yes, SB just dominating the world defending champions, Obey Alliance. And honestly, there's just so many good things that SB did there. The pick of Ganesh for Matt Coys yeah. completely disrupted the flow for Obey. And it seems like they weren't ready for Caden on that Mercury as yeah. well. He and Baronic in particular were doing a real good job putting out all the damage. I feel like those two are the real damage dealers for the side of Strictly Business. It was not only the damage from those two gods, but also the mobility that was provided. The displacement from the portals, being able to just get in and action, ju juking, dodging, weaving, whatever all the Ds that you want to throw in there. And it was not responded to at all by Obey Alliance. Veronic even picked up the blink at one point in the game, and there we see it coming into, into factor. Therefore, I'm able to blink onto PB and Jelly and get that clean, kill cleaned up. He had the Doom Orb, but that didn't deter him from playing aggressive. I don't believe he died all game. He was just going through the team fight, blowing people up. Yeah, and this one I think was the unofficial triple kill as he was just doing so much damage. To go having 50 stacks on your Doom Orb and not dying there is a little surprising surprising for a mid mage but now when you think that mid mage is a Giannis then you can really tell why SB picked this so early in the draft and it's a little bit easier for you when your opposing jungler is having a rough game as Mifflin was especially in the early game he really wasn't able to have very much of an impact or put out much pressure. Instead, it was all Caden who was the one running through the team fight. And I wouldn't be surprised, though, if we're going to see some ideas to shut down that jungle onto Caden, maybe taking away the Mercury from him. But either way, we've seen a relatively quiet Hunter versus Hunter matchup between Zaxi and Fatal Ghost. But once those team fights started rolling around, Fatal Ghost did some good things. And most of the good things that he did was baiting out this Gold Fury. We've been talking a little bit today about what we're seeing from our AD carries, and it seems like most of the time they're a little quiet through the early game, but then they rotate in, especially someone like Hu Yi with those suns raining down, controlling the areas of the team fight, pulling the Gold Fury, and blowing up any members that are left alone. It's good patience coming out of Fail Ghost from that last replay, being able to just get in there, really relying on his teammates to set him up for those abilities, and also taking advantage of Mifflin whenever that hammer was on cooldown. And we talked a lot about how much Caden and, and uh, Baronic in the mid lane were chunking, but Fatal Ghost was chunking too. He was definitely not one to ignore in the team fight. That's oh. a big part of why things went so bad. That was Baronic coming in with yeah. the damage. But it was the stun set up from Fatal Ghost that allowed that damage to be confirmed. So great synergy from all of SB, Obey Alliance. They need to figure out a response here if they want to get a split. Yeah, Obey, Obey Alliance has a lot of things to try and take a look at in this next game, but we've been saying his name here all day. Caden yep. is the one that's been going through these team fights, setting everything up with the surprise Mercury pick that I don't think Obey was ready for. No, absolutely not here, but it worked out really well considering the other side of the aggression. We're seeing Matt Coys just do a lot of setup for his team. The Dharmic Pillar is nothing to scoff at here, and the amount of distance that Caden provided for himself combined with the Giannis threshold, Giannis portals, it was very difficult for Obey to respond. Early on, we thought it was going to be Mifflin and his Thorold that had the more global pressure, but it turned out to be Caden and Baronic with the global pressure that Giannis and Mercury provided. Those were the ones that were stretching out the map, and Obey Alliance couldn't keep up with them until that lead just got to the point where they couldn't contest. Well, we'll see.